Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second hour of the Bay Area Case Studies. We're well into the virtual college fair portion of the evening, so we're so excited to have you all here. And I know that you're all very excited to hear about which colleges you're about to hear from. So before we get to that, I do want to make sure that everyone understands the format of the session. So we have six wonderful institutions here to present to you. Each will have six minutes to present on their institution. And then we'll have some time for, for open questions at the end, but I would recommend asking your question throughout the full 45 minute session. So if you have a question, send it through that Q&A down at the bottom of your screen. There's no need to save your questions until the end of the session. You'll notice this feels different than the last hour. Your camera and microphone are off. Uh, the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, at this point, you're able to just kind of take a seat back and uh, digest all of this college information you're about to hear. Uh, so remember that that Q&A is your main way to interact with our college representatives throughout the next 45 minutes. A reminder that there are two more hours of the college fair after this, so check out those sessions if you haven't already, and that this session is being recorded and that the recording will be available online uh, within the coming days at strivescan.com backslash BACS for Bay Area Case Studies. And so with that, I'm happy to tell you all who you'll be hearing from in this session. So our six institutions are Villanova University, Lewis and Clark College, uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Whittier College, College of Worcester, and Barnard College. Uh, but with that, I'll go ahead and kick things over to our first presenter, which is Villanova University. Hey, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Patrick Rene. I work at Villanova University. Uh, I believe everyone should be able to see my screen now. So I'll just go through some quick slides to give a little context. I do start with campus. Villanova is situated in the suburbs of Philadelphia. So if you look there on that horizon, you see downtown or what's referred to as city center there in Philly. And we're about 10 miles west of that. Villanova is a pretty traditional style campus and medium in that size. We're about 6,700 undergraduates. And with the campus, things are about a 15 minute walk from place to place. So residential, traditional, um, what you see here is really what the campus is. Also, uh, a great feature with just the broader East Coast and other cities is that transit network. So there are three different train stops on campus with a commuter rail, as well as a light rail line. Then where my mouse is hovering, that is our South Campus area. That's where all of our first year students live. So I think that's just a really neat piece in that how we facilitate that first year experience and you having your own micro community, your own dining hall there, outdoor space, yet remaining just a 10 minute walk to the rest of campus. One thing about Villanova is that we are the nation's one and only Catholic and Augustinian institution. So you'll note there on the seal at the bottom left are values with unitas, caritas, and veritas, those meaning um, unity, love, and truth. The next piece with Villanova is that we are comprised of four different colleges. So we have a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, a School of Business, a College of Engineering, and a College of Nursing with a variety of majors, as you can see there. Those are also our kind of as they went alphabetically, that's also their size from largest to smallest. A student would be applying distinctly to one of those four colleges at Villanova in the application process. In many cases, going in undeclared or um, to, to a particular college, though in the case of engineering and nursing, you would be applying distinctly to a particular major. Some of the attributes during your studies at Villanova is that as a Catholic Augustinian institution, we do have a core curriculum or those general electives that are you know, guided by our history and heritage, as well as our perspective and our future visions and what we want students, the talents we want them to um, attain in addition to their majors and minors at the school. There's also gonna be a lot of opportunities for, for research that happens on campus with our professors and some of the graduate programs that we have on campus as well. Uh, a great springboard for that is our first year research program, which allows students to apply for 60 different research projects in the spring semester of their first year. Study abroad is also quite common at Villanova is about 45% of our students take part in that and there's 60 different countries. It is something that's available to every major. Um, so I think that's a great philosophy as I'm someone who encourages students no matter where they go to study abroad. And again, many majors and colleges do facilitate that. Then uh, before I address the deadlines, I think the, to try to kind of capture what the, the student body is like at Villanova or that community feel, it is a, a term that we um, use very, Often, but again, I think it's something hopefully very tangible if you do get to visit campus or if you talk to current students and alums. A big, you know, some centerpieces for that community or where you might find that um, most available, how would you say, most apparent 
is when it comes to our athletics. We are a school that does have a lot of support for those athletic teams, but then also the intramurals that play on campus. And then the community service, there's two big events we do each year, one being Special Olympics and one being a day of service in the Metro Philadelphia area. So those, and along with others, you'll find, tend to see students all participate in those two areas in some way, shape or form during their four years. But then of course, there's a lot of other involvement on campus too. As it relates to our different deadlines, we are a school that utilizes the common application, as you'll hear from many, many other colleges tonight. For the coming year, we are test optional in our admission process. So in, if you have that ability to access those tests, or I should say, if you don't have the ability, that is of no disadvantage whatsoever. We have the different um, pools for application with early action, early decision. And as noted before, since students are applying to different colleges, we do look at students in those different contexts or in those different pools, depending upon which college you apply to. Some special features are that if a student is considering um, our College of Engineering, we require they take physics in high school. For those considering nursing, we like them to see biology and chemistry on their transcript. And for those considering our School of Business, um, we highly, highly encourage students to take calculus during high school. Otherwise, going forward, know that we do hope to be open on campus, as I'm sure most of my colleagues in their respective colleges um, hope to welcome visitors on campus this summer. Um, but those dates will become available on our admission website. Otherwise, a variety of social media platforms, you can continue to learn more about us, as well as the many virtual offerings we'll be having throughout the rest of this year and into the summer. So with that said, thank you for listening, and I'll pass it off to my colleague, Holly, at Lewis and Clark College. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. You even stole my job. You, you passed the mic for me. Um, that's awesome. No, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about Villanova. And although Patrick already did it, I'll, I'll pass the mic off over to Lewis and Clark as well. Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, so my name is Holly Elliott, and I am the Associate VP for Admissions at Lewis and Clark College. We are a private college with a public conscience and global reach. Um, so located in Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm going to, six minutes is not a lot of time, but I'm gonna do my best and I'll try not to talk too fast. Uh, so uh, a little bit about size. We are just under 2000 undergraduate students. Uh, while we do have a law school and a graduate school of education at Lewis and Clark, our dedication really is to undergraduate students. Our average class size is 17 students and our classes are taught by faculty members. Um, so we're a pretty small school, um, but there are lots of opportunities um, for students to have a, a really well-rounded, balanced experience where they get to experience and be involved in a lot of different things on campus. And that tends to be something I find is pretty consistent among our students, is that high level of engagement. Um, academically, we are a liberal arts college, so we um, really believe strongly in engagement in the classroom. We offer 29 majors, and actually this slide needs to be updated to 32 minors at this point, um, but really um, dedicated to, uh, to that, that idea that the student and the faculty members are learning together, um, and uh, the faculty take really do take seriously their role as mentors for our students. Um, and I think uh, that really comes through for uh, a really broad array of our students um, have the ability to create lifelong relationships with professors. A um, little bit about our, our community and who our students are and where they come from. Uh, we do find that um, we have 47 US states represented um, and actually most of our students, 90% of our students come from a state other than Oregon. So um, we do see a really um, you know, nice um, diversity of where students are coming from, um, both international students and domestic students. Um, and there's a little bit of some other statistics in here about, about who chooses Lewis and Clark. Um, the academic component is a really important part of the experience, but we also know that uh, there's a definitely a sense that students are looking to find their people. Um, this slide still gives me a little bit of the creeps because obviously this is before COVID, but this is Pio Fair. This is a big tradition that happens every fall on campus where um, all of the student organizations come out and students get a chance to learn about all of the many different things that they can be involved in. Um, in student organizations and uh, co-curricular activities. And we really do find that there's um, you know, a lot of different things that draw students to us. One of them is our location. 
Uh, we are in the city limits of Portland, Oregon, uh, but we're about six miles south of the middle of downtown Portland. So you can get a little perspective from, from this image. If I dropped you on campus, uh, you'd have no idea you were in a city. We have kind of that quintessential feels like the middle of nowhere kind of campus actually feels like it's in the woods, not the middle of nowhere, but uh, lots of trees. It's a very, um, very serene and peaceful space. And yet you can hop on our shuttle bus, which is actually right at the bottom of the P on that slide there, uh, in about 15 or 20 minutes be in the middle of downtown Portland. So amazing access to all the things that go along with being in a city, internships, community service, cultural events, food, um, all of those, all of those things are funny donut shops. Um, but you also have that that campus really specific campus environment. And I think our students really love they, they get a combination of both of those things. We also are, are really well positioned for access to the outdoors. Um, and that's something we find is pretty prevalent among our student interests. 90% um, of our students are gonna go on at least one trip with our college outdoors program. They offer over a hundred different trips a year, going from a variety of places, whether it's the ocean or the mountains, or as this slide indicates that we're five of uh, about a five minute walk from a state park. So our campus, if it's not foresty enough for you, you can get to actual forest in a really easy, really easily. Um, so there's um, really lots of ways to engage. Um, we also do see our position as being part of a global perspective and a global perspective is something that we that we really do encourage our students to participate in. Um, over 60% of our students are going to spend at least a semester on an overseas program and vast majority of those programs are actually our programs. So they're going overseas with a group of students from Lewis and Clark and with a professor from campus. Um, we offer these programs on a variety of different locations um, and they're very accessible to students. So your financial aid all goes toward the semester overseas, just like it would if you were here on campus. And the cost to go overseas is very, very comparable to what it would be to be on campus. Um, so we really want students to be able to access that and have, um, those are really life-changing experiences and things that uh, we know from years of surveying our alumni have really had um, meaningful impact for those individuals and on the, the choices that they make um, for their careers and many of the different pathways in life. Um, I bring this up, we do have what we call our four, five, six commitment. So uh, we do believe an undergraduate education should take four years, as long as you're doing some basic things like meeting with your faculty advisor on a regular basis, um, it will take four years. If it doesn't, if, if you are not complete at that point, we'll pay for the ninth semester of classes. Um, we also do have um, access to pathway programs with our graduate school and with our law school. There we go, a couple of email addresses. Um, please feel, to, feel, feel free to be in touch with us and learn more on our website. Awesome, thank you so much, Holly, for sharing a little bit more about Lewis and Clark. Before we head over to our next institution, I do wanna make a quick plug for that Q&A. And so if you have any questions about either of the institutions you've already heard from, about any of the ones you're about to hear from, or maybe just about the college search in general, remember that you have six wonderful college representatives to ask your questions to throughout this 45 minute session. So don't forget to take advantage of that Q&A section. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to WPA. Awesome, thank you so much, Isabella. Um, all right, everyone. Hi, welcome. My name is Claudia Vilas. My pronouns are she, or her, she her, hers. I'm an assistant director of admissions at WPI. Um, and WPI stands for Worcester Polytechnic Institute. We are located about 50 miles, um, 50 miles east of Boston. Um, and we are about 180 miles away from New York City. So just to kind of orient you and where, where we are located. Um, and in terms of what we offer at WPI, we are primarily a STEM focused institution um, with a project based curriculum. We do have a little over 50 degree programs, the most popular of which is engineering. We do offer 12 different types of engineering um, for you to choose from. We have a very popular computer science program that's currently the second most popular program. And then we have other um, subjects in, in STEM that students may be interested in, such as uh, physics, math. Um, so 
for you to know, each year we have about 20% of our students who enroll as undecided. They may know they want to do something STEM related, but haven't exactly figured out what that is yet. That's okay. When you apply to WPI, you're not applying to a major or um, uh, a specific school within the university, you're applying to the institution as a whole. And so we're making our decision to admit you or not based on the belief that you'd find success in any one of our STEM programs. We do also have um, a 13 to one student uh, to faculty ratio. Um, and so because we have a project based curriculum, we do have that opportunity for students to meet often with their professors. Um, and in terms of size, I'm, we have about 4,500 undergraduates and about 2,000 grads, but undergraduate is the focus um, of the university. Our students are able to double major, they're able to add a minor. Um, we also have a four and five year uh, BSMS program where students can get both their bachelor's and master's degree in four or five years. Um, you have to do some uh, planning ahead of time with your faculty advisor, but it is possible um, for students to graduate in, in four or five years with both those degrees. Um, students have the opportunity to do research at the undergraduate level. Um, it's as simple as talking to your professor about research that you're interested in. And then we have a 95% retention rate from a student's first year to their sophomore year, um, which we're, we're really proud of here at the university. Um, something for students to know also is that we do um, have a quarter system at WPI. Um, each quarter is seven weeks long. Um, so that's something that's really different. Um, students take three classes in each of these terms um, and we end classes early May. Students have the opportunity to take classes over the summer if that's something that you're interested in, um, if you want to get ahead with that BSMS program, if you want to get a double major. Um, so some students may decide to take classes, but um, about two thirds, the majority of our students will decide to do internships over the summer. Um, we have a non punitive grading policy at the university, so you can get a grade of an A, B, C, or an NR. The NR stands for no record. And we also have a flexible curriculum um, where we have faculty advisors who advise you on classes you should be taking in order to fulfill the requirements of your major. As I mentioned earlier, we have a focus on um, a project based curriculum. Our students are able to complete some of these projects, specifically the interactive qualifying project and the major qualifying project which they complete in their uh, junior and senior years, you're able to do that abroad. We have a little over 50 project centers. I um, mean, you pr pretty much take a turn um, in your junior year um, when you're working on the interactive qualifying project or the IQP um, to work full, full pretty much full time on this project. Um, your IQP is going to be focused on um, you bringing your STEM sk skill sets um, to solve a social based problem. Um, it, this is a really popular option for students. Each year we have, um, with the exception of COVID, um, about 90% of our students go off campus um, to complete their IQP and get that global sort of perspective. We also give students up to $5,000 in a global scholarship to be able to help fund the cost um, that the project center um, may have for you to have that ability to go abroad and, and be able to do a project in a different part of the world. Um, to tell you a little bit about um, success for our students, um, each year we do have a little over 400 companies come to recruit on campus. Um, we have uh, some college fairs that the Career Development Center hosts. Um, we also have a, um, a report that the, the Career Development Center publishes each year. It's called the um, the first destinations outcome report. I'll make sure to put a link, um, but they have found that the average starting salary for graduates um, of the class of 2019 was $72,000 a year. Um, and it breaks up by major sort of where students are at, um, where they went to graduate school if they decided to do that. So definitely encourage you to take a look at that report if you're interested in learning more. Um, we are a primarily residential campus. Um, and so first year students are guaranteed housing and past your first year, um, you are not. We have 56% of our upperclassmen students who do live on campus. Um, in terms of extracurriculars, we are NCAA Division Three Varsity School, 10 uh, men's teams, 10 women's teams. Uh, we have club and intramural sports. And then if you're not interested in sports at all, like myself, um, we have a little over 250 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in. And so we hope that there's something for everyone um, that you can find to spend your free time in. Um, in terms of our admissions overview, um, we require the common application, um, high school transcript, letters of recommendation, optional things were test lined as of 2021. Um, so we 
won't consider your test scores as a factor for admission at all. I want to make sure that if you can, you follow, you can scan this QR code if you're interested in receiving updates from WPI. And if you want to um, learn more about the institution, we have many resources on our website. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to Isabella. Awesome. Thank you so much, Claudia. Always wonderful to hear a little bit more about WPI. Uh, from here, we'll head on over to our next institution, which is Whittier College. Hey there, folks. Welcome. My name is Charlie Newman. I'm one of the admission counselors at Whittier College. I want to first off say thank you all for taking the time out of your evenings, late nights, wherever you are, to attend yet another Zoom call on what I'm sure is a pile of many. Uh, Zoom fatigue is very real, even for us admissions counselors. So bear with us as we try to push on to this Tuesday evening. But I'm here to talk to you guys about Whittier, and I'm excited to do it. So first off, we are a small liberal arts school located in beautiful Southern California. What that means is we're close to beaches and amusement parks like Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, which is a bit smaller, but has some amazing roller coaster rides I can see from personal firsthand experience. Uh, internship opportunities like the entertainment industry in Hollywood, entertainment capital of the world, aerospace with both NASA and SpaceX in, in Southern California. And then you have all the technological hubs for things like uh, social media, and just tech engineering in general up in Northern California as well. But you don't need me to tell you about the location. You can look that up on a map. You can Google search all the fun things in Southern California. What you can't find out too much about is all the amazing academic offerings that Whittier College has to offer without me showing you this amazing cheat sheet that we have uh, displayed in front of you. So everything on this list that you see, a, just a bullet point, you can major in that. Anything that has an asterisk, you can minor in that. Uh, and then a few things to point out on this list. We have an engineering 3-2 program. We have a partnership with USC. So if you uh, want to go into engineering, you would do three years of school at Whittier, finish up that engineering degree over at USC, which is a highly accredited school for engineering. And then we have some pre-professional programs like pre-health and pre-law, in addition to our Whittier Scholars Program, which is pretty great. So a lot of schools have a similar uh, type of program. Uh, this is just the name for ours. It's a self-designed major program. So what you can do, like I did myself, I graduated from Whittier not too long ago, back in 2018, and I graduated through the Whittier Scholars Program. What you can do is essentially create a major by using classes that exist underneath the umbrella of these other subjects. So what I did was major in business ethics, which is a very standard degree, but as you can see, that's not on the list. So what I did was I took a lot of business classes and some of our uh, organization, organizational leadership classes as well down below, paired that with some of our philosophy classes that focused on eth ethics and morals and business ethics, we created it. I wish it was that easy. I had lots of advising, lots of help to make it happen as every student does going through the Whittier Scholars Program, but a really cool thing that we have offered. And then a little quick fast facts for you. So we are a small, small, small school, only about 1,700 students. Uh, average class size we get from that is 19 student to faculty ratio, 12 to one. What that all uh, kind of simmers down to is that you are the school's number one priority. You as an undergrad are the first person in line to access to your professors, any kind of lab equipment, any on-campus resources is there for you, which is why a lot of our departments like our career center our equity and inclusion office, everyone that's there, as soon as a student walks in those doors, they will bend over backwards for them. They are so excited to get students in there so they can start helping them out right away. The sooner you get in there, the better, no matter where you go. Get in people's faces right away in your first year. That's my advice. And then some hands-on learning opportunities. At Whittier, we're really big with uh, being lifelong learners, going out into fields and really making a, a tangible difference. And different ways that students are able to do that is through internships, whether it be on campus or off campus. I gave a few examples of opportunities in that uh, geography section in the beginning of this presentation. Service opportunities, so working uh, like doing beach cleanups, working with elementary schools to tutor students, even going to neighboring schools to talk to them about college in general and just saying, hey, if you think that this is a door that's close to you, think again. You can find a school that's right for you if you want to go on to higher education. Uh, fellowships, which I love talking about because I was able to combine fellowships and study abroad in my own experience. I got a fellowship to go to Japan for a month and I absolutely loved it. I got to research uh, media piracy in Japan. So fellowships for not aware, it's essentially organization or a foundation that's funding a project that you want to do. So amazing opportunity. It's like a scholarship for something that you're promising to do. And then study abroad, which you can do through fellowships or just on your own. As the name implies, studying abroad. Some of my colleagues have talked about this already tonight. We have over 80 different, 80 different study abroad programs, whether you want to go to China, 
uh, Spain, Dominican Republic, Japan, like myself, anywhere. I mean, there's definitely a program for you. So our uh, study abroad department is always excited about talking about opportunities for students, whether it's for a full year, a semester, one month, whatever it is you want, they'll make it happen for you. And then a look, a look at our uh, sort of student population. We are an incredibly uh, diverse student population and most of our students do live on campus. So at Whittier College, the diversity you see in the student body really reflects that diversity you see in Southern California. So as a Whittier student, you'd be interacting with other folks from all different socioeconomic backgrounds, religions, gender identities, uh, all different perspectives, really. And then bringing those pers perspectives together in the residence halls, in the classroom, on campus, in the dining hall, really elevates the experience you get. You're definitely not sheltered at Whittier College. It doesn't feel like there's this bubble and there's the real world outside of the school. Whittier really is sort of like your first step into the adult world because you're gonna be having such diverse and different conversations. You're gonna be learning a lot in the classroom, of course, because that's what you're going to school for, but you're learning a lot outside of the classroom as well, just from the interactions with your peers. And then financial aid, but it's always nice to know how you can get some money. I already talked about fellowships, but we also have our John Green Leaf Whittier Scholarship, which every student's evaluated for right off the bat. Uh, it's basically a merit scholarship, but we also look at pretty much everything else in your application from extracurriculars, so those letters of recommendation, need-based aid. So the FAFSA, always important to fill out. Then some additional scholarships you can apply for are the Leadership Scholarship and Talent Scholarship. The Talent Scholarship is for art, music, and uh, art, music, and theater. And then uh, leadership is for anyone that feels like they're a leader on campus or in their community. Raise Me, great little organization that works with lots of schools. We're one of them to award what they call micro scholarships for simple things. I know my time's running out. I thought I'd get this fast thought and have coffee. Not talking fast enough. We are a common app school. Makes it so easy to apply. If you're looking for statistics for an average student, last year's income in class, average GPA, middle three area, SAT, about five to 600 in each section, ACT, sweet spot right there in the middle. And then some admissions plans. Early action is November 15th, regular decision February 1st. We do not do early decision, which is important to know. And there is my contact information in case you have any questions because I couldn't fit everything into six minutes, but I will end it there and pass it off to Isabella. Thanks so much, Charlie. That was super entertaining. Really enjoyed learning more about Whittier. And uh, you segue really well into my reminder about the Q&A that I'm about to make. And so uh, if you feel like you have questions about what Charlie was wrapping up on there, uh, don't forget that you could ask him a question in the Q&A. So don't forget to take advantage of that. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to our next institution, which is the College of Worcester. Hello, and thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to give you some information about the College of Worcester this evening. Um, my name is Sarah Ozar, and I work with students and families in New England, Florida, Georgia, and Northern California. Um, so if you have any questions, my email address is there. I'd love to um, answer any questions after the session. So as you go through the college search, we want you to know what we believe makes Worcester different from the other schools that you're researching. And here are three takeaways. Worcester is America's premier college for mentored undergraduate research. Our entire campus community benefits from a diverse student body, which is one that embraces its differences while supporting one another and celebrating traditions like no other school. And lastly, that we're fortunate to have a larger community in the city of Worcester around us that supports student life, service learning, and career exploration. So first let's touch on mentored research and what that means at Worcester. Worcester is a liberal arts and sciences college with just over 2000 students. And we're very intentional about this. We believe it's an ideal size to provide the type of residential and academic environment that best prepares students for life after graduation. With an average class size of 18 and a small student to faculty ratio, we're committed to providing access to our professors. Their number one priority at Worcester is offering high touch mentoring and excellent teaching. And classes will be very interactive and most are discussion based. So we make sure that every Worcester student not just those in certain majors or in honors programs, but every student completes at least one major research project prior to graduation. And in fact, it's required of all students in their senior year. And we refer to this experience as the Senior Independent Study, or IS for short, but not to worry. Our curriculum and experiential learning are built intentionally to provide coursework and opportunities for students to discover and confirm what they are most passionate about. And then during their senior year, a professor within their major serves as an advisor and supports students every step of that process. 
Here's some examples from last year's graduating class of independent studies. And you can see that at Worcester, research takes many forms and is available in all academic programs. IS is experimental, it can be creative, it can be analytical, it can be all three. So some quick notes about our beautiful campus. Um, we, are two, we have 240 acres. We're an entirely residential campus with all of our students living here. And people often ask about the weather. Um, we have all four seasons, including expecting snow tomorrow. So 17% of our student body is made up of international students and US citizens living abroad, making Worcester one of Ohio's most international campuses. And we rank 19th among all private liberal arts colleges in the US. And one thing that makes Worcester even more special is that you have students from all over the world who embrace each other's differences but also having this incredible sense of community and pride that you don't see at most schools of our size. So we have a very vibrant student body. Clubs and organizations are academic, they're athletic, arts and culture-based, faith-based, performing arts groups, Greek life, and service and civil engagement, just to name a few categories. And most students at Worcester are involved in a number of activities throughout their time here. We have a marching band complete with a bagpipe and drum corps, an orchestra, seven a cappella groups, the Worcester Chorus, and multiple ensembles. While we do have a music major, anyone can participate in these groups. For athletics, we're an NCAA Division III school and have 23 varsity sports. We compete in the North Coast Athletic Conference, and students can also participate in numerous intramural and club sports. And the Scott Center, which is our athletic and recreation center, is open to all students to remain active throughout the school year. So theater performances are produced throughout the academic year, giving opportunities to students for acting and behind the scenes work. And like music, we do have a theater and dance major, but any student can participate in the productions. And we also have an improv group. So our home, the city of Worcester, is just an hour south of Cleveland, about 40 minutes from Akron Canton and about an hour and a half from the state capital of Columbus. And our students love that they can take advantage of the commercial district on the north end of town, but also can enjoy the individually owned coffee shops, the boutique stores, and restaurants in our historic downtown, which you see pictured here. So students also take advantage of the local community for many experiential learning opportunities. Pictured here, you see one of the health coaches, which is in partnership with our local community hospital, which gives patients increased care while providing valuable hands-on experience for students interested in a medical field. And the Worcester Volunteer Network is one of our biggest student organizations. And here you see students planting trees in the local park. And speaking of which, Worcester students utilize the area's many parks to get outside. And I'd like to share just one quick endorsement about Worcester and his new book, The Price You Pay for College, New York Times columnist Ron Lieber praises Worcester for its exceptional combination of quality faculty, affordability, and undergraduate research. And Lieber devotes an entire chapter to answering how the College of Worcester puts it all together, highlighting Worcester's upfront attitude in helping prospective students understand the financial package they will receive and the satisfaction students get from faculty mentorship. So some next steps for you. Uh, you can check out our virtual and on-campus visit options and find out application details like deadlines and scholarship merit um, scholarship and financial aid information. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, there's my email address and I will pass it off to our next presenter. Great, thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing a little bit more about the College of Worcester. Uh, last and certainly not least, we have Barnard College. So sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. You would think a year in, here we are. Hi everyone, um, thank you so much for being here. My name is Lily Brown. I'm an admissions counselor at Barnard College. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm also an alum of Barnard. Um, so to start us off, these are what we consider to be our four pillars of Barnard. Um, and I know it sounds like I am paid to say this, the reality is I am, but I think because of these four pillars, Barnard is the most unique option uh, for students like you. I can't really think of other schools that combine all four. So let's dive into them. The first one is our identity as liberal arts college. Um, we have a student body of 2,600. And like a lot of the schools that I've mentioned before, small student to faculty ratio, 74% of our students, our classes, excuse me, are 19 students or fewer. Um, and we go through a general education requirements curriculum that I have a slide about on later um, in order to fulfill credits for your Barnard degree, diving into a lot of different departments and inter interdisciplinary uh, coursework. 
Our second pillar is our identity as a historically women's college. This is my favorite of the pillars if I had to choose one. Um, to go to a women's college means that you were going to a school where the um, experience of women is at the forefront and never at the, at, on the back burner. Um, it started off historically in 1889 um, when Frederick A.P. Barnard, who was the president of Columbia University in the 1800s, which in Columbia remains an all-male institution until 1983, um, said that he, we should admit women to Barnard, they're not stupid. Um, and Columbia said no. So he said, okay, I'll start my own school uh, for women um, who can take courses with Columbia faculty who want to teach women. Um, and that really um, spirit of activism and, and providing opportunities has pre prevailed today. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, the third pillar is our partnership with Columbia University. Um, so I kind of briefed on that in our history a little bit, um, but we do have a unique partnership with Columbia. We've historically always had one and today, um, now that Columbia is co-ed, uh, what that means is that we share academic and envir environmental and extracurricular resources. You're looking at a map of campus right now. Um, everything that is behind the book icon, the diploma, the diploma, the graduation cap, and the Columbia crown, that's Barnard's campus. And then everything behind the Empire State Building icon is Columbia's campus. So we're divided just by a street and there's lots of cross um, mingling happening there. I'll talk about that more. Um, and then our last pillar is our unique location in New York City. The street that is dividing us between Barnard and Columbia's campuses is Broadway. Um, so you would have a Broadway, Manhattan, New York City address when you move to, when you enroll at Barnard, you can tell your friends to smell you later. Um, and that really does mean that um, students have used the city as their extended classroom, both um, intellectually and also pre-professionally. Um, very quick information about Barnard here. We are a liberal arts college. You can see our top 10 majors of our class of 2020, our most recent college graduates. All of this is online, but just to give you a good idea of um, who's coming to Barnard and what they're like. Very quickly, um, this is a <laughs> heavy slide, but it is we don't have any lies here. This is exactly what you need to do in order to graduate from Barnard. These are the requirements. Um, so this is called Foundations. It's our liberal arts curriculum um, designed to get um, students to be successful women in the 21st century. Um, and I think the main thing that I wanna highlight here um, is the senior experience. Um, so kind of like what College of Worcester was saying, we do have a required research experience here at Barnard. And that is a self-directed research that students pursue during their senior year at Barnard. Um, it depends on what they intend to major in. I was a history major at Barnard, so I wrote a thesis uh, for my senior project, but I have friends who majored in neuroscience who conducted and published um, their own uh, self-directed study uh, and research experiments, excuse me, for their senior experience. Okay, to talk a little bit more about um, the women's college experience, again, as I said, it's really about the, the presence of women. Um, at Barnard, I um, always give the caveat that I was not looking at women's colleges at all when I was applying to college. Um, and I'm so thankful that I did um, because I think what women's colleges provide that no other co-ed institution can um, is that I learned how to derive power for my gender identity in a variety of spaces, be them academic, professional, interpersonal, and that is a skill that I will take with me forever. Um, to talk more about our partnership with Columbia University, um, so all of our courses are cross-registered between Barnard and Columbia's campus. We are looking at our library right now. You will see that there might be some folks in there who don't look like they're female identifying, and you would be right. There are men and other genders on Barnard's campus at all times, considering our partnership with Columbia University. Um, there is no, like, competition for courses on either campus. In fact, Columbia students take courses on Barnard's campus just as often as Barnard students take courses on Columbia's campus, but there also are more than enough resources academically for you on Barnard's campus. We share all of our libraries and, and all of our dining halls, all of our extracurriculars. Um, to give an example of how Barnard students are involved um, on Columbia's campus, um, the Columbia Daily Spectator, which is the uh, student newspaper of Columbia University, when I was a student there, there was only one academic year where the editor-in-chief was not a Barnard student. Um, so even if something says Columbia University, we're going to be using our the power that we've derived as women in the Barnard community and really taking it no matter where we go. Um, lastly, our location. Um, I My top criteria for applying to college was to be in an urban center, and there is none other than New York City. So here we are. Um, so academically, what that looks like for you, and to be to be to be clear, this is on the roof of one of the Barnard residential halls. So you can see both Columbia's campus, but also the lovely skyline at sunset. Uh, um, Something academically that's really unique is that we have a uh, thinking locally requirement in our foundation's curriculum. And you can 
you can um, fulfill that in any way you would like. Oh no, Isabella, really? Um, in any way you would like. Um, so that can be an environmental science class where you are taking water samples of the Hudson River and bringing it back to the lab. Or it could be a dance class where you learn the history of dance in New York City. And also there's just in, in general, New York City is the internship capital of the world. You will have plenty of opportunities to figure out what you would like to do um, during the school year and during the summers um, to track your professional career at Barnard. I think that's that. Great, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about Barnard. Really appreciate it. A big thank you to all of our college representatives. Look how good you all are. Uh, at this point, I was going to invite everyone to turn on their camera, but you all are already a step ahead of me. Uh, so we do have a few moments left in this session. And so what we will do is we'll do a very fast lightning round. Uh, we do have a question for our full group. And I think what will be easiest is everyone would like to answer in the order that you presented. Uh, but what we'll, the question we'll have everyone answer is, what is your favorite tradition tradition or event held on your campus. And so I think we'll kick things off with Villanova. My favorite uh, event tradition is that Villanova hosts Fall Festival every year, which is actually the largest student-run special events event in the world. So it's a weekend-long extravaganza, and I feel it's when the university is its best self. Great. Lewis and Clark, we uh, do something called Once Upon a Weekend, um, and it happens um, uh, it, on a Monday. A topic is posted publicly, and anyone in the community is welcome to write a one-act play uh, centered around that topic. And then um, you submit your plays by Friday, and then they cast them and rehearse them on Saturday, and then Sunday they put them up um, so that in the course of a week, uh, the community has come together to create these series of one act plays um, and uh, really allows lots of different students to get involved. Um, one of my favorite events is the um, International Food Festival. Um, every year, the International Student Council will put out a call to the student body and students will volunteer to cook meals for the WPI community. And so staff, faculty, um, uh, students get all together and um, we're able to enjoy food together, able to enjoy one another's company. Even this year with COVID, um, they set up in the International Student House time for people to pick up um, food and watch um, performances via Zoom, um, which I thought was really thoughtful and amazing. And um, it was great to participate um, in that event. At Whittier, our, our mascot is the Whittier College Poet, but we have an unofficial mascot on campus, which is called The Rock. And it was this senior prank from way back in the early 1900s where a bunch of guys went up on horse and buggy to the Whittier College or Whittier Mountains, grabbed this giant rock, plopped it on campus, said, what are you going to do about it? And the school decided to like reverse prank them. And now it's sort of a billboard on campus. So students every day of the week during the school year paint the rock. I know other schools also have rocks. Whittier is a part of that select group. And it's so funny to see what people are doing with it, whether it be for an on-campus event or to even like promote solidarity too. Uh, it's always like just looking at, looking at that rock and sort of see what's going on or what's on students' minds. So I like that tradition a lot. Um, my favorite event is culture show, but my favorite tradition would be when our students um, work together during the winter when we have enough snow and completely fill an arch in the middle of our campus and one of our buildings with snow. Um, because tradition has it that if they can fill the arch to the top, then there won't be classes the next day. So um, that necessarily hasn't followed through every year, but the students definitely try um, as often as they can. My favorite event that Barnard puts on is the Athena Film Festival. It's a yearly film festival um, that focuses on women in film, both behind and in front of the camera. Um, and my favorite anecdote from that is Greta Gerwig, who's one of our alums, director and writer of Lady Bird, amongst other things, um, got her start in film at Athena Film Festival, um, pre like presenting an award to Ava DuVernay, another critically acclaimed women, female director. That's awesome, great. Well, thank you all so much for, for taking the extra moment for our, our lightning round question here. I do see that we have questions coming in through the Q&A and know that those of you who have asked questions, you might not get a, a response here as we wrap up the session. And that's a-okay, all of our presenters will be receiving your questions after the event as well. So you may receive some follow-up via email. So keep an eye out for that too. Uh, but with that, 
for the sake of time, we do need to wrap up this session. Remember that there are two additional hours of programming that you can check out, two more hours of College Fair Fun. Uh, but I do wanna take a moment to give a big thank you to all of you for joining us, a big thank you to these six institutions and college representative, representatives for presenting as well. Uh, and hopefully these were new institutions to each of you, even if you knew a little bit about them, I hope you found some new information that maybe has piqued your interest and maybe uh, you'll consider as you continue your college search. A very quick survey will appear on your screen as soon as this session ends. If you don't mind taking the extra moment to fill it out, it's very helpful for us as we continue to plan events such as these. Two more hours of sessions for you to check out if you haven't already. And a reminder that this was recorded, so if you need to return to any of this information, it will be available at strivescan.com backslash B-A-C-S. Uh, but with that, we'll make sure you have time to head over to your next session. And I hope that all of you have a wonderful evening.